At this moment, he realized the importance of having a secretary. Having a secretary was indeed convenient. Long-distance driving could be exhausting, but now was entrusted to Ling Shuang, allowing Park Jimin and Wang Mengmeng to enjoy some relaxation time. Park Jimin felt comfortable in every moment, and he couldn't resist teasing Yu Ling Shuang incessantly. Secretary Yu, I asked you to find a car for me, and you found this big thing. Does this BM do you if it Chairman Lim status? Be more careful next time. Ling Shuang was boiling with anger, but she couldn't do anything except swallow her frustration and anger. Yes, I apologize. Sir, I'll pay more attention next time. Wang Meng Meng, peeling an orange, chimed in uncomfortably. Brother, stop picking on you Ling Shuang all the time. This car is nice too. In such a short time, there aren't many luxurious cars for you to choose from. Plus, Yu Ling Shuang is busy with company matters every day, to the point of exhaustion. Now she even has to worry about your transportation. Can't you hold back your tongue, even for an orange? As she spoke, Wang Meng Meng gently handed the shiny golden orange segments to the person she liked in an intimate manner. Part Jimin not only didn't refuse but also eagerly accepted the orange segments Wang Meng Meng offered, saying, He, little sister, understands me best. Though a simple gesture, when Jai Lu handed Park Jimin an orange segment, it carried boundless care and affection. Coupled with Park Jimin's remark that only his little sister understood him best, at that moment, Wang Meng Meng suddenly felt her heart skip a beat, an indescribable sensation creeping into her soul. His intention, only I can bring him happiness. Wang Meng Meng's goodwill increased by five, currently standing at 70 points. Yu Ling Shuang, observing this scene through the rearview mirror, couldn't help but furrow her brow. Such a brat, truly a giant child, treating little sisters like servants. The oranges were even peeled, yet he still demands to be fed. This attitude is truly excessive. Lane Shuang's goodwill decreased by five, currently at a negative 15 points. Just as the system notification sounded, Park Jimin took a sip of Coca-Cola and immediately choked, coughing and sputtering. Wang Meng Meng looked at Park Jimin with concern. Slow down with your drink. Park Jimin muttered irritably to himself. What's going on? Just a moment ago, I asked Wang Meng Meng to hand me an orange segment and her goodwill not only didn't decrease, but also increased by five points. Yet Ling Shuang's goodwill decreased. What does that have to do with her? My little sister didn't say anything. Yet she raised her tone. I spent 20 billion to buy this goodwill, but it seems so volatile. Just a few minutes ago, the sky, once clear blue, suddenly turned a murky gray. Thunder rumbled, as if someone was resentfully accusing, and lightning flashed, tearing across the sky. Rain began to fall, lightly at first, then gradually increasing in intensity. On the highway, the rain poured down like a deluge, heavy droplets hitting the car's windshield like tiny stones, creating a noisy commotion. Visibility was greatly reduced, leaving only a blurry trail ahead. Wang Meng Meng suddenly spoke up. Look, it's raining. Park Jimin nodded in response. Yeah, this weather is unpredictable. They say there are strange places, where just a few steps forward, it pours rain like a waterfall. But step back, and there's not a drop. Even the rain in the sky has its own boundaries. Finishing his words, Park Jimin glanced at Lane Shuang, instructing, Secretary Yu, slow down. Keep a safe distance from the car ahead. Hardly had Park Jimin finished speaking when a sudden incident occurred. Ahead, a blue sedan abruptly changed lanes on the highway for no apparent reason. This reckless action caught the driver of the truck behind off guard. Curses and honking echoed in vain before the truck plowed straight into the sedan. Damn it! Break! Break! Ling Shuang, driving at high speed, couldn't decelerate in time. All three of them immediately braced themselves. It's over. Does she want to go down with me? The truck rammed straight into the sedan, resulting in a horrifying collision. The blue sedan was thrown up high before flipping over onto the road. The BMW crashed into the two vehicles involved in the accident ahead before being propelled into the air as well. In the moment of danger, Park Jimin quickly shielded Wang Meng Meng, embracing her tightly. Immediately afterward, the vehicles behind couldn't break in time, causing a chain collision. Unfortunately, just as their car was flipping, a Mercedes suddenly came rushing from behind. Another horrifying crash echoed, causing the car to sustain severe damage. In the moment of danger, 
Park Jimin once again acted as a shield, holding Wine Mang Mang tightly in his arms. Seconds after the dreadful collision, everything fell into silence. The blaring horns, the frantic screams, all disappeared. The BMW lay overturned on the road, twisted and completely deformed, resembling nothing but a pile of scrap metal. Park Jimin gazed out, his eyes filled with concern. Coiling back, he suddenly delivered a powerful kick, sending the already deformed door flying off. Carefully, Park Jimin helped Wang Meng Meng crawl out of the car. For an ordinary person, such a strong impact could lead to internal bleeding, even death. However, with Park Jimin's robust physique, he only felt a slight soreness in his lower back from being jolted several times, with his arm being the only part scratched. What bad luck! Thankfully my body is four times stronger than an average person, or else I might have perished. Wang Meng Meng, being tightly held by Park Jimin, remained uninjured. At this moment, Wang Meng Meng also regained consciousness after the strong impact. Just a few seconds ago, she thought she would die, and upon opening her eyes, she saw Park Jimin holding her, which left her extremely frightened. Tears streamed down Wang Meng Meng's cheeks as she choked out, Are you okay? I was so scared. Park Jimin looked at her reassuringly and said, Don't worry, I'm safe and sound. How could anything happen to me? The rain continued to pour heavily, soaking Park Jimin's and Wang Meng Meng's clothes. After comforting Wang Meng Meng, Park Jimin then observed the scene of the accident. The once busy highway was now engulfed in chaos due to the multiple vehicle collision. Damaged vehicles were scattered across the road, blocking all lanes. The rainwater mixed with oil, forming muddy puddles and the pungent smell of burning vehicles filled the air. Some people were panicking, trying to flee the scene, while traffic congestion stretched for over 10 kilometers, creating a tense and chaotic atmosphere. Wang Meng Meng suddenly exclaimed, Yu Ling Shuang, Yu Ling Shuang is still in the car. Upon hearing this, Park Jimin hurriedly escorted Wang Meng Meng to a safe area. Don't wander around, I'll go rescue her. After giving instructions, Park Jimin took off the t-shirt he was wearing and covered Wang Meng Meng's head with it, then quickly went to rescue Yu Ling Shuang. Compared to Wang Meng Meng's minor injuries, Ling Shuang's condition was much more severe. Fortunately, she had fastened her seatbelt, and the airbag had deployed at the critical moment, which helped prevent life-threatening injuries. Secretary Yu, are you okay? Hearing Park Jimin's voice echoing in her ears, Ling Shuang tried to move. She realized her body was numb seemingly trapped by the metal shards from the mangled car after the accident. Lang Shuang exerted all of her strength to try to move, but each movement caused her extreme pain. My leg seems to be trapped, trapped in here, can't get out. After saying this, Yu Ling Shuang felt the world darkening, a thought emerging in her mind. Am I about to die? Oh, how absurd, to die like this. Park Jimin roared, using force to remove the deformed car door. Come out. With a physique four times that of an ordinary person, the force exerted on the car door reached 23,000 Newton, enough to easily tear even a living buffalo in half. Seeing Ling Shuang not making any movements, Park Jimin urged her continuously while rescuing her. Secretary Yu, hang in there, you'll be fine. Ling Shuang watched as Park Jimin sweated profusely in the dim and misty sky. Despite his bleeding arm, he dared to risk saving her. At this moment, Ling Shuang's normally firm and steel-like inner self was once again stirred. Though he's a scoundrel, he always displays the gallantry of a man in moments of danger. Whatever happens, he never disappoints, always appearing at the most opportune moments, exuding an irresistible charm. Ling Shuang's goodwill score increased by 20, bringing her current goodwill score to 5 points. Seeing the notification, Park Jimin immediately shed tears of joy finally turned positive. It was really challenging. Ling Shuang's right leg seemed to be broken, nearly immovable. Park Jimin had to carry her princess style to where Wai Meng Meng was. Wai Meng Meng anxiously asked, You Ling Shuang, are you okay? But as she approached and saw Ling Shuang's face, Wai Meng Meng gasped in horror. Oh, you Ling Shuang, your face. Seeing Wai Meng Meng's grave expression, you Ling Shuang panicked and asked, What's wrong with my face? Just moments ago, in the midst of her pain, she hadn't paid attention to her own appearance. Now, she hurriedly felt her cheek, 
finding her hand covered in fresh blood. Wang Meng Meng hastily searched for a piece of mirror to inspect. Look, just look. Just a second later, Yu Ling Shuang looked and was startled. Moments ago, as the car turned, her left side had collided with the broken piece of mirror. Her once flawless face now bore a more than 10 centimeters long tear. Though not life-threatening, this wound could mar her beauty. For a woman, appearance mattered greatly. Such a deep wound, even if healed, would leave a scar. Yu Ling Shuang staggered back two steps, the handheld mirror slipping from her grasp to the ground, the pain in her right leg nearly causing her to collapse. She couldn't accept this. Her emotions shattered. She felt lost and dizzy. Part Jimin tried to console her. It's okay, as long as you're alive. Medical science has advanced so much now. Even scars can be fixed. Wang Meng Meng nodded in agreement. That's right. That's right. Yu Ling Shuang, still incredulous, asked again. Really, it can be fixed. You won't see me as a monster, will you? You won't who? Who? Part Jimin didn't say much, simply embracing Yu Ling Shuang tightly for comfort. The rain poured down heavily, and under its deluge, the two held each other tightly amidst the cold of the rainy day. Yu Ling Shuang felt a warm ray emanating from Park Jimin. Just a moment later, the ambulance arrived. Yu Ling Shuang, with severe injuries, was placed on a stretcher, while Park Jimin, Wan Meng Meng, and the others with minor injuries from the accident were also loaded onto the ambulance and taken to the hospital. Observing Yu Ling Shuang's extreme sadness, Park Jimin couldn't help but ponder. Today's events have truly been tumultuous. Regarding the fractured bone, it just needs to be reset and then immobilized with a splint for a while until it heals and she can move normally again. The scar on her face can also be treated, but it will require a special ointment. Ling Shuang's appearance has been compromised and it may take a long time for her to recover, but this could be advantageous. When a woman's appearance is compromised, their psyche tends to weaken and their will is not as steadfast as usual. I can take advantage of this opportunity. I will tenderly care for her while assigning her important tasks. I doubt she'll be able to endure it, when she truly can't bear it anymore. I'll have another formidable assassin. It seems it's time to elevate my medical expertise. Who knows? Perhaps future goodwill will depend on it. The next morning, the sky was clear, with gentle white clouds drifting lazily. The three of them, part Jimin, hurriedly left the hospital. Fortunately, Wang Meng Meng only suffered minor scratches, while Yu Ling Shuang, though her limbs were injured, with no serious bone damage, had a life-threatening wound on her face. She looked a bit disheveled, but her spirits were relatively high. The phone rang, and Kim Jisoo quickly answered. Hey Park Jimin, have you arrived at Jiang Bakum yet? Big Hit TV is hosting an event opening today. Park Jimin's voice carried a hint of gravity as he responded. I've reached Jiang Bakum, but there's a bit of an issue. We had a car accident on the way here, and we're currently at the hospital. Kim Jisoo exclaimed anxiously, A car accident? Are you all right? Which hospital are you at? Just now, I heard the radio news reporting a massive pileup on the highway, causing a five kilometers traffic jam. I didn't expect you to be involved in it. Do you need me to come help? Xiao Lai, quickly call the driver. Part Jimin calmly reassured, Don't worry, I'm fine. I've been discharged from the hospital already. If anything serious had happened, I wouldn't be able to answer your call. Please, don't come here. Kim Jisoo, still concerned, asked. But, can you still attend the press conference for Big Hit TV's activities today? Park Jimin affirmed. Of course, Jin Lu was just a minor accident. I'll attend the event tonight. It won't affect my work. Lane Shuang looked into the distance, silently thinking. As a well-trained female spy, I am more resilient and stronger than ordinary women. If another woman had her appearance marred, she might lament endlessly. The more she thought, the calmer Ling Shuang became oddly calm. She had gradually accepted reality. Beauty is fleeting. It cannot accompany me throughout life. Perhaps losing my appearance isn't such a bad thing. Compared to looks, competence and intelligence are my greatest weapons. Losing my beauty allows me to see the true intentions of those around me. Only those who stand by me when I'm at my lowest, who don't turn away when I'm in despair, are truly driven by genuine affection from within. I should cherish such people. Yu Ling Shuang couldn't understand why she had these thoughts. Perhaps adversity truly reveals sincerity. Park Jimin looked at Ling Shuang's dismal mood, unable to help but sigh deeply. Then, with a reluctant expression, 
He said, Secretary Yu, I have a task for you. In the next two days, pay attention to whether there are any beautiful villas in Jayongbago. I want to buy one. After a while, I make a motto. I don't want to stay in hotels, so I also want to buy a villa there, preferably near the city center. Wang Meng Meng regarded Park Jimin as an unscrupulous boss, crazily exploiting the value of employees, especially when Ling Shuang was in a vulnerable state, prompting her inability to endure. You'll be hung on the lamppost. You Ling Shuang is injured, and yet you're still ordering her around. Park Jimin smirked. Oh my, but if Secretary Yu doesn't help me, I won't have anyone reliable by my side. She works for me quite diligently. Secretary Yu, you've done a great job. Wang Meng Meng protested indignantly. How can you exploit someone like that? Right, Yu Ling Shuang. Wang Meng Meng was about to confront further. But upon seeing Yu Ling Shuang tearfully distressed, she immediately stopped, unable to say another word. However, only Yu Ling Shuang knew how much Park Jimin's words warmed her heart. After her appearance was marred, she feared being rejected by society, no longer valued or trusted. Yet Park Jimin still assigned tasks to her, which meant he didn't underestimate her. Wang Meng Meng intended to console Yu Ling Shuang, but upon seeing tears streaming down her cheeks, her heart suddenly halted. Why is Yu Ling Shuang crying? Park Jimin couldn't hide the remorse in his eyes. He looked at Ling Shuang and then reproached himself. Did I? Did I really go too far? Afterwards, both of them stood silently by, sensing Ling Shuang's sorrow. But only God knew why she was so sad. Ling Shuang wiped away her tears while explaining, Meng Meng, you misunderstood him. He doesn't look down on me because of my appearance. He still treats me the same as before. That's the greatest affirmation and kindness to me. Yu Ling Shuang said solemnly, Master, rest assured, I will definitely complete this task with the utmost seriousness and ensure your satisfaction. Today is August 1st, the day Bigket TV officially launches online. In just a short half month, Bigket TV has spent nearly hundreds of millions of dong to create a massive advertising effect from social media platforms like TikTok or QQ to major online portals like Webo. All are inundated with advertisements for the grand launch of Bigket TV. Even the most famous cinema hall in Jai Ambagong has been exclusively booked by Bigket TV today for a magnificent opening ceremony. It's said that many famous stars will attend the launch event today. Indeed, Bigket TV has not only invited Kung Kung, Dang Zi Fei, but also Dai Renji, Hui Zi, Da Gu Kao, Gu Xiaoming, and many other famous streamers. Bigket TV really knows how to make an impact. After returning to the Kinyuan neighborhood, Park Jimin took Wang Meng Meng to the opening ceremony of Big It TV. Wang Meng Meng, with an enthusiastic expression, asked, Wow, this is the event you're about to participate in. It looks so grand. Unexpectedly, Wang Meng Meng encountered a familiar young actor and immediately showed extreme excitement. Oh, that's Kum Kum, isn't it? I can't believe I'm seeing Kum Kum for real. Oh my goodness, I can't believe it. I can meet Kung Kung here. I want to get his autograph. Oh, and there's Tun Tun too, smiling so sweetly. Wang Meng Meng was overjoyed, jumping around when seeing her idols. Park Jimin looked at Wang Meng Meng with disdain. What's the big deal to get so excited? He's just more handsome than me. Oh my, what did I just say? Though you're handsome too, but Kung Kung has a different kind of handsomeness. Kung Kung has a very handsome appearance, while you're just elegant, not as refined. Park Jimin rolled his eyes disdainfully. Meng Meng, in the future, you'll often have to attend events like this. Today, I'm taking you to practice getting used to it, so you won't be overwhelmed later. Wang Meng Meng lowered her head somewhat self-consciously. But can we dress like this? I see everyone wearing suits, evening gowns, and the like. Are we too casual? Park Jimin patted his chest confidently, too casual. Ha ha. Meng Meng, those fancy things are for ordinary people. Even if I wear flip-flops, no one will dare to look down on me tonight. At that moment, two elegantly dressed girls were enthusiastically discussing. Where did these country bumpkins come from? They've never interacted with society before, and we don't know how they managed to sneak in here. Xiao King, don't pay attention to them. Upon hearing this, Park Jimin's expression subtly changed, his inner anger boiling, while Wang Meng Meng, ridiculed as a country bumpkin, felt extremely self-conscious, bowing her head in embarrassment. 
Why Meng Meng felt humiliated and part Jimin, observing her demeanor, couldn't contain his fury. You bunch of nonsense. Where do you come from to dare to mock my sister? Who do you think you are to insult my sister? You want to die. Park Jimin approached coldly, not typically having such a hot temper. If others mocked him, he might not even care, perhaps just brushing it off with a laugh, because after three years of serving Jung ho -seok, he had become accustomed to being ridiculed by others. But facing the two girls now, Park Jimin's attitude was devoid of any courtesy. You two, be careful with your words and actions. Park Jimin's words caused the two girls' expressions to change. Before them stood two young, beautiful girls in the bloom of youth. Looking at their beauty, their attractiveness isn't the kind that could topple cities or nations, but rather, it carries a refined, gentle allure that captures the gaze of those they meet. Wan Xiao King, standing to the right, has short, gently curled hair that hugs her slender, delicate face. She wears a simple yet sophisticated blue dress. Standing beside her is Wang Xiao King's close friend, Nai Meizi. She has long hair that falls over her slender shoulders and wears a pastel yellow dress, light and feminine. In stark contrast to their physical beauty, Wang Xiao King's speech is a chaotic mess, crude and unpleasant to the ear. Who are you calling Miss? You're the Miss, you country bumpkin. In this day and age, everyone thinks they're the best only having to see some internet hot girl to start calling her sister without knowing what they themselves amount to. Naimizi, chiming in with support, is no less grating. What are you to tell me to watch my words? That's laughable. Like attracts like birds of a feather flock together, fish swim in the same waters. A country bumpkin will always be a country bumpkin. No matter how hard they try to dress up like some big shot, they can't change their true nature. Hearing this, Park Jimin became even more infuriated, his face turning purple with rage. Wine Meng Meng, seeing Park Jimin clenching his fists in anger, gently pulled on his sleeve and whispered, Brother, just let them be. But Park Jimin was unmoved, giving both women a cold warning look. I'm giving you one last chance. Apologize to my sister right now. Wan Xiao King, far from repentant, became even more provocative. Apologize? For what do you have any idea how many fans I have? She started to boast about her impressive following. But before she could finish her sentence, Park Jimin stepped forward. A strong gust of wind blew and smack. A powerful slap landed on her delicate face. Wang Xiao King was utterly stunned, humiliated in front of so many people by a man she deemed unsophisticated. This humiliation made her nearly lose her mind. You dead dog. How dare you hit me? How dare you? What gives you the right? Before Wan Xiao King could call for help, Park Jimin doubled her misery. Smack, another slap left Wan Xiao King dazed and confused. Wan Xiao King lay motionless on the ground, resembling a statue, pain radiating throughout her body, yet nothing compared to the agony of humiliation and emptiness in her mind. Park Jimin's action of striking his daughter stirred the anger of many women present. Naimizi began to shout, Stop! you despicable man. How dare you, a man, hit a girl? People united in condemning him. Who is this guy? How could he hit a woman? Does he even know who she is? She's Wan Yuk Sin, the daughter of Wan Lai Company, and her boyfriend is Bai, the only son of Xiaomi Group. If he dared to hit her, he's finished, utterly finished. Hitting a woman is cowardly, utterly lacking in dignity. Faced with such criticism, Park Jimin remained calm, even amused. Oh. Come on, don't be so hypocritical. Who says women can't be hit? If a woman acts out of line, she deserves a slap. Dignity? What's that for? I don't need such a thing. Upon learning that his girlfriend had been assaulted, Bay, the young master, immediately gathered a few of his cronies and rushed over, looking fierce and intimidating. As soon as they arrived, he stared daggers and bellowed, whoever dares to cause trouble in my territory, speak up. Unfortunately, the situation took a turn for the worse. Bai, upon spotting Park Jimin, instinctively recoiled, sweating profusely as if caught in a downpour. Chairman Lim, he stammered, since our last encounter, Chairman Lim's prestige has only grown. He's already a legendary figure, not to mention his plans to build a film city in Tianmen. I'd also like to get a piece of the action. Not everyone gets this opportunity, only Chairman Lim does. It's fortunate to meet you here. Seeing Bai's arrival, Wan Xiao King lit up with joy. She quickly ran over to plead her case with Bei, 
Young master by, you're here. This country bumpkin dared to hit me. You have to take charge for me. Bai was taken aback by her words. Not only was their relationship now in jeopardy, but he also risked offending powerful figures. Before Wan Chao King could finish her plea, Bei swiftly delivered a resounding slap to her face, leaving her utterly flustered. Shut up, you disgraceful woman. There's no place for you to speak here. What else do you have to say? Do you think I will know what you're up to? You act obediently in front of me. But behind my back you scheme. And you want to use the Bai family to expand Wan Lai Company. Dream on. I'd slept with you. Now get lost. After cursing, the young master Bai immediately approached Part Jimin with reverence. Sir, I apologize for this. I've bumped into this dog several times, unaware of my place. If there's any offense toward you, I'll have her apologize instead, hoping you'll forgive this insignificant person. As soon as he finished speaking, numerous hot girls, artists, and onlookers were all astonished. Am I seeing things? Isn't this the arrogant sign of the Bay family? How come he's so polite? What's his background after all? Even young Master Bai can't lift his head. Wang Meng Meng knew Park Jimin was wealthy, but had no specific idea about his identity. Feeling his protection, she was genuinely happy. Normally, in such situations, I would swallow my anger. But unexpectedly, Park Jimin is so assertive, unwilling to let me endure any humiliation. He's like a dominant character in a movie, but I really like it. Moreover, Park Jimin's face is incredibly handsome. This bad young master seems to wield considerable influence, naturally having to be respectful in front of him. Turns out he's as tough as an ox. At this moment, Wang Meng Meng's inner feelings surged incessantly, the feeling of fondness for someone burning strongly in her heart. Wang Meng Meng's goodwill rating increased by five, her current goodwill rating being 85 points. Right when Park Jimin attended the official opening event of Big Hit TV at apartment 2603, building 8, Kinyuan District, Lane Shuang was far from idle. To guard against surveillance, she first utilized her counter-surveillance techniques to carefully inspect the entire room for any monitoring devices. After confirming it was safe and free of any oversight, she called Jin Jia Mu. It's time to update young Master Jin on the situation. But at this moment, Yu Ling Shuang's inner turmoil and conflict were intense. After this period of living together, her once firm resolve from half a month ago had wavered. Park Jimin, damn it, why is my mind filled with images of this man? Despite betraying his trust, I have no other choice but to remain loyal. Yu Ling Shuang wavered for a moment, but she quickly dismissed those thoughts. I will not betray Jin Jia Mu, nor will I betray the Jin family. At the same time, under Mato's dazzling night sky, Jin Jia Mu sat leisurely on the rooftop of a skyscraper, overlooking the bustling city. He raised the phone to his ear, his voice neither bland nor salty. Hello, it's me. Yu Ling Shuang began her report. Young master, we can now proceed. Chairman Lim is currently attending an event at Jayongbakum. In Tianmen City, I've discreetly acquired several plots of land scattered across various locations. Acting now will impact the core area of the film studio development plan. It's possible to deliver a fatal blow to Chairman Lim, effectively blocking his throat. Upon hearing the situation, Jin Jil Mu felt extremely pleased. He responded with a tone full of praise. Well done, Ling Shuang. You've worked hard during this time. When you return, I won't overlook your efforts. Jin Jia Mu's praise acted as a soothing balm to Ling Shuang's wounded soul. She hastily replied with a choked voice. Young master is too kind. This is what I should do. As long as the young master requests, Ling Shuang can sacrifice everything for you. Without you and the Jin family back then, I, I would have died starving on the streets long ago. Ling Shuang's memories of her early days began at the orphanage. She had no relatives, no friends. The head of the orphanage was strict, but still a support for her. But when she was seven years old, the orphanage closed. The seven-year-old girl wandered the streets, and human traffickers kidnapped and cruelly beat her. They were ruthless people, exploiting vulnerable children like her. They withheld food, clothing, brutally beat, and abandoned them to bay on the streets. Yu Lin Shuang endured those dreadful months for a year, the darkest period of her life, a life devoid of light, enduring daily agony, like hell on earth. Then one day in the freezing winter, a handsome, gentle young man appeared. He wrapped Ling Shuang in a coat, gave her shoes, 
bringing warmth to her in the icy winter. With words of compassion, she could never forget. From today, you won't go hungry or cold anymore. You'll have a new life. Little sister, would you agree to come with me? From then on, she was called Yu Ling Shuang. She had enough to eat, warm clothes to wear, no longer enduring filthy streets. She even got to go to school, receive a proper education. The Jin family provided a new life for girls as destitute as her. They have no home. The Jin family conglomerate is their home. The Jin family is the only place they belong to. Being trusted and valued by the young master is the greatest honor. She will never betray the Jin family. Yu Ling Shuang analyzed sincerely. Thank you, young master. I have carefully analyzed the documents on Fei Tian real estate and will send them to you shortly. Moreover, this person's identity is truly mysterious. There are many things about him that I cannot understand. Furthermore, I have been monitoring the bank account he transferred money to me from. This bank account is the prestigious black card of a Swiss bank, and only those with a net worth of over 10 billion can upgrade to this black card level. The security factor of this account is too high. I couldn't find any useful information. I'm afraid the power behind Chairman Lim is not simple at all. All right, Ling Shuang. This information of yours is very useful to me. Regarding the car accident case, don't worry. Rest and recuperate well. When you return, I will invite the best orthopedic surgeon in South Korea to treat you. Hanging up the phone, Yu Ling Shuang suddenly frowned. Young master, how did you know I had a car accident? I never mentioned it, and even your people who came didn't bring it up. So why does the young master know so quickly that I had a car accident? At this thought, she suddenly felt shocked. A disappointed idea emerged. Could it be? The young master doesn't trust me and secretly had someone else follow me. This can only explain the situation. Meanwhile, at the grand opening ceremony, the long-awaited moment finally arrived. Come Come's performance, a combination of singing, dancing, and explosive rap, thrilled the female fans, making them cheer enthusiastically. Come Come, I love you. Come Come, I want to have your baby. Kung Kung's performance ended, leaving the audience still eager for more. At the same time, the host spoke up, impressive indeed. Let's all thank Kung Kung for the performance. The next act will be presented by a special guest we've invited. As soon as the host finished speaking, a sparkling crystal piano was suddenly lifted onto the center stage. Wang Meng Meng curiously asked, Who is the mysterious guest, and do you know anything about it? Seeing Park Jimin silent, Wang Meng Meng looked up, then couldn't help but be surprised. Ah, why are you suddenly wearing a mask? At this moment, Park Jimin was wearing a Batman mask, leaning close to Wai Meng Meng, and whispered, Meng Meng, next, I'll perform an act for you. Saying so, Park Jimin stepped towards the center of the stage. Not only were the celebrities and famous people buzzing with discussion, but there were also bursts of excitement from the audience below the stage. Look, that piano seems familiar. Could it be the one Lang Shen performed with at the 2008 Olympic Games? Wasn't it reported recently that this piano was auctioned for 500 million and bought by a mysterious tycoon? Damn, the legendary crystal piano. Isn't it Lang Shen himself who came, showing how capable Bicket TV is, even able to invite Lang Shen? Bicket TV is really something. Just as everyone was curious about who would perform this act, Park Jimin confidently strode towards the center of the stage. Each step he took was firm and confident, causing Wang Meng Meng and the audience below the stage to be thrilled. Park Jimin, truly handsome. I never imagined that Park Jimin, my rain brother, would be even more outstanding than I had imagined. At this moment, Wai Meng Meng's heart beat with excitement, like a little bird finding its cage, feeling a wonderful sensation spreading throughout her body, awakening every cell within her, brimming with vitality. Wang Meng Meng's goodwill increased by five, her current goodwill rating reaching 90 points. 